Kelsey with Navajo Tea Time, and this is our second June episode. Hey everyone, Adrian here, Navajo Tea Time co-host. Yeah, and this episode's topic is health and fitness. So for the past few months, I've been doing this Pel these Peloton workouts, and they're really fun, they're really exciting. And I started um, recently doing this morning regimen where I do like stomach workouts to kind of strengthen my core. And we had this idea of doing a fitness challenge this year. So Navajo Tea Time is celebrating its two year anniversary and we're really excited about it. It's a big deal. And so we wanted to know if our supporters and watchers would be interested in doing a fitness challenge with us. So um, maybe Kelsey can share some of those details about the challenge and how people can participate. We're trying to use Strava to set up a group challenge. And with that, you would follow Navajo Tea Time on the app and then Navajo Tea Time will follow you back and then you'll be able to join the challenge. And I believe you have to go something into your privacy settings and share your activities with followers. Um, so once I figure out how to do that, I'll post a um, little mini video on our Instagram and Facebook um, to give more detail on that because I'm trying to mess around with the app with my own personal Strava account and the Navajo Tea Time Strava account to try and make sure to be able to present the most accurate information on how to join the challenge but if you don't have the app or you don't want to add another app to your phone you can track your own miles with like using google maps to see how long you've actually walked because this is a distance challenge 75 miles that's the distance the goal that we're we're striving for is 75 miles and so the second way would be like you know screenshotting and submitting the miles you've done and that would be all in good faith in the participants so we're trusting you guys to be honest about this and the first three people to reach 75 miles will win a Navajo Tea Time campfire mug <laughs> <laughs> so one reason why we're saying only 75 miles is because in northern Arizona, we're in a massive heat wave, we're in a massive drought, and then also if we're not in a heat wave, we're in a thunderstorm warning. So we don't want people out when it's too hot or there's a chance to be struck by lightning. So we want our participants to be safe and also still be able to exercise and be moving. One of the best things about this challenge too is we can all do it together. There are multiple ways that you can engage with this fitness challenge and we would like to encourage you to tag Navajo Tea Time in your both Facebook and Instagram posts. That way we'll be able to see them, we'll be able to see your progress, and we can track things on our end. That way we can determine who the winners are. And we are we are going to give out um, first, second, and third prize winners. So the first person to reach 75 miles will win a Navajo Tea Time Campfire Mug. It's a collectible design that's on the Campfire Mug is the first that was designed by Crystal Dugai. And so it's really cool. And before we roll out new merchandise, we wanted to be able to give all of you an opportunity to get those for yourselves. Um, I also wanted to announce that we're going to be dropping the price for all Navajo Tea Time campfire mugs. They were $20 and that included shipping and handling, but they are going to be dropped to $10 and we'll put the link down below to the online shop and you can pick up your mug while supplies last and they are limited. So That's it for our challenge. Um, the deadline is the end of July, so I'll try and get that information on how to officially join the group, but from now until the end of July, you can still just tag us and post your miles. Let's do a quick Q&A. Kelsey, how many times do you work out um, in a week? It depends. Um, usually I start off really strong at the beginning of a week, like maybe until like Wednesday, I'll do a daily walk for like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think I think about working out a lot, but I don't actually do it. 
So I actually have my bike here with me. Um, I ride my bike to and from work on good days. Lately, I've been dressing it more and more though. So I have like heels on and it's just, uh, riding a bike in heels is not really the thing. But the cool thing is here at work, I, um, the, there's this group that, that sets up during the lunch hour and they do these little trail rides during the lunch hour. So that's kind of cool. I think when you're getting older, you know, you really should have a regimen, you know, like my mom, she used to have a regimen. I used to see her working out every day. She would do aerobics and it was like eighties aerobics too. <laughs> I also follow different YouTubers that do fitness. So I'm really like, I'm really into the whole, like, um, what's it called? The dumb thick workouts. Those are cool. So lots of leg workouts and stomach workouts to try to get fit and Instagram ready. <laughs> I always fail at that whole like summer bod like challenge that people do because I never do it on time. I usually wait until it's summer that I'm like, oh, I'm going to work out. And it's like really hot. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, I think me i usually start workout trends with my mom because she would force me to do them with her because mm -hmm. she didn't like suffering alone i guess mm -hmm. um she bought this video called like beach it, it's like a beach body program i think they have a bunch of different ones it's called payo like um yoga and pilates kind of mixed together mm -hmm. And I enjoy those workouts, um, but I don't do them often enough. Um, I, obviously, I should work out more. Um, I, I try to force myself to walk 30 minutes a day because I work from home and they're, going to the office is literally like 10 steps. So <laughs> I need to get up and move more. So I'm trying to force myself to do that. But it gets really difficult when, you know, they say um, a body in motion keeps moving, but once it's staying still, it doesn't want to move anymore. Let's transition from this downward spiral and <laughs> let's talk about something else. Um, <laughs> do you have any business updates? Um, business update. So we're just getting so to the end of our business boot camp and then we're just doing a lot of admin work right now and then we still have our buy me a coffee up and the new sticker design for july should be out soon um those are also limited edition stickers um if you become a member you get a sticker or um eventually we'll figure out a way to sell the stickers directly online my business is called happy accidents media production we do various media on and around the Navajo Nation. Basically, Northern Arizona is our service area. Um, we can help with video production, sound editing, um, graphic design. Um, not so much graphic design, but more like digital art commissions is more of what we do. And photography, right? You do photography also? Yeah, I do photography. So what's up with you and YKD and the Resilience um, Art Exposition? So um, the Resilience Organization is an organization based out of New Mexico. And I sit, on, as a, I sit on the board of directors and we are rolling out a new place program this year. So we're going to have one August 1st, another October 10th, and the third one is going to be December 12th. All of them are on Sunday. They're going to happen at 11 a.m. They're going to run to one. They're going to be virtual this year, um, but hopefully next year they'll be in person. And the PLACE program sessions are really great. PLACE stands for People, Land, Art, Community, and Ecology. So it's really cool and we're really focused on the transference of intergenerational knowledge. So that's our main focus. Um, also, you know, how does art benefit and grow our indigenous economies. So it's going to be really great. We're pulling in some amazing presenters. We have a cool team that we're putting together. We're getting our website updated. And the Resilience Organization can be found on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. 
and I'll be sharing um, a lot of information probably in the next few weeks to prepare for the first play session and help everybody registers and joins. Um, this year it's going to be free, but we're hoping that, you know, moving forward, we'll be able to um, secure more funding so that we can have more programs, but the in-person programs, there may be a registration fee. It's still kind of like up in the air, but yeah, so take part, please um, register, join us. It's going to be really fun. Um, and then with YKD, we're not really doing anything super big right now. Um, I'm actually looking into options and how we can do another charitable distribution of solar products on Navajo. Um, the, I mean, the great thing is there has been this huge influx of funding that has gone to our communities because of COVID, unfortunately. But because of that, a lot of um, solar projects are taking off. A lot of um, elect, like electrical infrastructure bills are happening. And so that I'm, I'm grateful for, you know, like previously there were 15,000 homes that were unelectrified. And now hopefully, you know, that's going to change drastically where a lot of homes on Navajo will have electricity, they'll have running water, they'll have the services that they deserve, um, that the rest of the country enjoys. So, um, you know, a lot of those things did contribute to the, the, the great impact that COVID had on the Navajo Nation. So, I mean, the, flip, the good side is that people are seeing what's happening and they're working to address these problems and the disparities that exist. Um, on the downside, though, you know, there's also, I think, a lot of the funding allocations are going to other things, you know, so... Um, I think what I recognized early on is that a lot of people view the solar products that we offer as a luxury as opposed to just a need. You know, they'd rather buy something that's inexpensive, like a kerosene lantern um, or batteries. But unfortunately, you know, when you're burning fuel in your home, that causes a lot of indoor air pollution and it can get you sick over time. Um, we did a study back in 2012. And it showed that a lot of people that burned fuels in their homes, they had respiratory illnesses um, that were um, caused by that. So, you know, if you are interested in investing in solar power, you know, reach out to Yewaka Knowledge Distribution. We are on social media. Um, if you go to at Team YKD, you'll be able to find us on um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I'm actually thinking of starting a TikTok account. Oh my God, I know. I didn't want to do it, but I'm just like, more people are like, you should do it. Like, you should get on TikTok. And I'm like, great. Like, am I too old to be doing that? But I mean, a lot of people say that. And I'm just like, whatever. People think I'm too old for a lot of things and I still do it. So, yeah. <laughs> well, all the links will be in the description box yeah. below and with like with tiktok I, I don't feel like i'm too old i just feel like i don't want to it's just <laughs> another thing another to, platform. to do <laughs> if you had a tiktok what would you post on it like lights turning on or like you guys installing things yeah, like we would we would probably post up our installs, we would probably do instructional videos, we would probably do like, um, like pitches like sales pitches. And then, because I mean when you're doing a, a YouTube video, you're gathering all this content you have to get B roll you got to get like, you know, like the speaking elements of it, like the interview elements of it and then you got to edit it all and it's just a lot with TikTok, it's really like it's really short and sweet. And you can also, you have access to this big like cache of music that you can utilize, which, you know, on other platforms you have to buy the rights. And so it's kind of, it seems like it's more fun. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't like even downloaded the app, but I'm super tempted to do it because <laughs> like I was um, my, my, I guess my um, classmates, um, who are at in the Eller College or the Eller School of Business, Eller College of Business Management? 
at UA, they um they did it. They looked they looked at our YKD site and our social media, and they were like, "You guys should be on TikTok." And I was like, oh, "I don't know." And they were like, "Just do it. You should do it. You need to do it." And they were like, "You could get so many followers." And I'm just like, "Great." Comment uh, below if YKD <laughs> should get a TikTok. Let's do a poll. <laughs> We'll do a poll. Should we start a TikTok? If she, if we get a hundred comments saying YKD get a TikTok, she'll get a TikTok. I'll have to do it. I'm yeah. putting you out there. I guess also. Also, you. <laughs> <laughs> media productions. If you get, if we get a hundred comments saying Kelsey do it, then Kelsey has to do it, and she's gonna do it well. <laughs> we'll see. Huh. Well. <laughs> You got to do it. Uh, actually, I have to. I don't know. We are at the mercy of our subscribers and viewers. Just kidding. <laughs> You're like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. If we get 100 separate comments that say get a TikTok, do it. Each of our companies will get a TikTok. You also have to be a subscriber. You can't just comment and not subscribe. <laughs> there well, it's a privilege not right <laughs> just kidding <laughs> that's funny okay so um two-year anniversary mm -hmm. this is kind of a big deal i mean we started this channel because we wanted to we wanted to talk about topics related to you know the navajo nation the res we wanted to talk about things that we don't often talk about or we we see talked about on social media you know like for example home site leases or missing and murdered Diné relatives or the yaj complex or what marriage looks like what family looks like and how it's different you know uh taboos and like scary stories that only native people know and understand you know these are some of the things that we want to talk about and so i think now that it's been two years and we have you know all this content that we've created and we've had all these conversations about you know things like motherhood and fatherhood and parenthood you know there's there's still a lot to talk about and i think getting through covid was really hard but it was nice to have something to do because you know we couldn't come together so we had to figure out how to use zoom well and look at us now with our cool backgrounds and <laughs> our good signal do you remember how bad it was oh my gosh <laughs> last yes year. last year it's so bad the, like and, internet going in and out and it's like mm -hmm. adrian are you there are you there <laughs> Yeah. What do they and say? We, Zoom is like a seance. <laughs> yeah. Answer me if you're there. <laughs> and like, additionally, we had to transition our company so that we could, we could meet the needs of our communities, but we could also run our businesses and make, you know, make some money so that we don't go under because so many businesses went under because of COVID. And so we had to find creative ways to get through it. And I think some of the good things that came from it was just like us being around more and more for our families. Like for me, especially, I felt like I spent so much more time with my family. We got so much closer. Um, I think also, you know, I was able to invest in new technology for the business and I invested in myself. You know, I decided to go to grad school. That's a huge accomplishment for me. I never, ever thought I would do that. And I'm excited now because I'm actually going to be starting a new program this fall and I'm really excited about it, but it's just taking my education to the next level so that I can eventually utilize that invitation or education as a tool to, you know, move things forward on the Navajo Nation to really have a bigger impact. So, I mean, those are some of the good things that have come from this time, but I think just speaking it out loud and forcing myself to remember what it, what our journey looked like over the past two years. You know, it's really cool. And I think we've come a long way. It's been really exciting to work with you and definitely getting to talk to somebody else about these things. Cause like, usually I'll just sit there and the conversation will just go on in my head. I'm like, there's no one to actually talk to this about or like, you know, say out publicly 
because like my grandma was like you don't talk about stuff like that we don't talk about this we don't talk about just just don't say anything it's like but why not and it's just i guess sometimes there's just that social norm where you don't speak about bad things mm -hmm. and sometimes it gets frustrating but then you also have to respect your elders mm -hmm. i remember your elder rant in one of our old videos <laughs> Which one? I've been, I've been filling my, my days and nights with other things that are not at all related to spirituality, <laughs> but I think what I've really been focused on is just like my wellness and mental well-being, you know, and a part of that is nurturing the parts of me that I, that often get neglected, you know, you know, there's different facets to all of our personalities that I think we need to um be aware of address nurture take care of ourselves and you know for me that has to you know that has to do with like reading a book that's total trash you know it's not anything academic it's not anything educational it's not anything related to indigenous knowledge it's just a simple beach read you know it's like chiclet and i love it i've just been consuming these books and that's been really fun I've been listening to a lot of new music and communicating with old friends who, you know, I absolutely love and I need them in my life. And I've been really like making an effort to do that. So, and that's what I love about summer. Cause it's like the time when you can kind of like have that downtime and just think about, think about what you need. You know what I mean? And yeah, cause I feel like I give so much of myself away, you know? I give so much of myself away to work and to my family and to my business and to all of the people who I support 100%. I do so much for others and, you know, I kind of feel depleted sometimes. And so I think I'm taking this time to just kind of be selfish and think about what I need and enjoy it and not be apologetic about it. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I get it. Um, but for me, it's kind of like opposite seasons mm -hmm. because my birthday's in January. So it's an excuse to like, I'm going to pamper myself in the winter. And mm -hmm. in the summer for me, it was always like, you got to work with your family. You got to go to the bead stand with your grandma. You have to run around, do this. You have to take care of younger siblings because they're not in school anymore. So for me, summer has always been work, 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 work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for me, the winter is like my, I don't know, my me time, my, yeah. um, my enjoyable time because it's winter. You don't go to the beat stand when it's freezing cold out sometimes. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah no, that's cool. Because like, yeah, my birthday is in August. So I kind of like do it up all summer. I take the whole month of August to celebrate. <laughs> And I ask, you know, I, I accept gifts <laughs> all month. <laughs> I buy myself gifts, things that I've been wanting and waiting for. And I kind of just spoil myself all month. And then, and then once it's over, because my birthday falls at the very end of the month. So it's August 29th. So if anyone wants to send me a gift <laughs> or a card, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just teasing. No, but I usually like at the end of the month, that's that usually coincides with the beginning of a school year. So um, not only being a student, but also working in at working in an institution of higher learning. It's like, OK, you need to be on top of your game. You need to be focused, you know. So like once my birthday passes, it's like, all right, it's go time. You're going to focus. You're going to do good. You're going to be on top of it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's definitely opposite for me. Yeah, for sure. And then, like, for me, not thinking about work or not actively planning or organize something mm -hmm. is stressful. Mm. So, remember, I don't know if you were there, like, Ryan was like, I don't know how to turn off. Ryan's my brother um, mm -hmm. and a co-owner. And he's like, Kelsey, you don't know how to stop working. You don't have an off brain, you know? <laughs> and I kind of took offense to that. I'm like, okay, fine. I will do less work. I will, tr I will try to force myself to not be thinking about work or projects or organizing things. And it was the most stressful two months of my life. Mm -hmm. I was 
I don't know. My brain was completely scattered because I couldn't think the way I want to think. And mm-hmm. I, so like I tried to focus my work on just between like my work hours. I'm like, okay, just focus on work at this time and then focus on family life. But my, my brain doesn't work that way. Like I get up, I'm okay. I need to do something for work. Then I'll do something for my little one. And then like, I guess people call it multitasking, but I just jump from task to task. For me, there's no clear separation. It's I'm working and I'm playing with my kid or I'm playing with my kid, but I'm also thinking about the next thing we need to do. And that's Mm -hmm. just how my brain works Mm -hmm. and trying to force myself like, okay, I'm only with Frankie. I'm only going to spend time with Frankie. And it was really stressful to try and constantly only focus on one thing, like one aspect of my life, like my family, my business, my personal life. I it was really hard to try and detach them mm-hmm. for me. And it made mm-hmm. me really stressed and really depressed. That, so <laughs> I had a business meeting at the beginning of the month where like, there were certain things Ryan couldn't do for the business. And there was things I'm like, I need to do it. So let me do it again. Because <laughs> um, I tried divvying up control and organizational power to the other people in my business. And I'm like, it was so stressful for me and it was so stressful for them to try to do it and then it was so stressful for me to try to let them do it so I was like nope we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll go back <laughs> the way it was because it's not working mm-hmm. out for either one of us and yeah. I guess that relates back to health not fitness so much but wellness like just because a certain way of working or certain guidelines of how to separate or not separate your life works for someone doesn't mean it's going to work for you and you like really trying to figure out what works best for yourself Mm -hmm. is really important because like I said I tried doing the separating you know you only work from this hour to this hour and then the rest is family time couldn't do that it was stressing me out way too much and then for like Urian and Gurnan it works just fine you know they can only they're fine with just their work hours and their video game hours and their family time hours. But for me, I don't work that way. I think it's more of like, try different things until you figure out what works best for you. Mm -hmm. Because you might think you know, but then you come across like an organizational system or a planning system or even like a time management system that you didn't even think of. That's what I'm constantly doing. I'm constantly like watching productivity videos and looking into different organizational and productivity apps because mm-hmm. time management is my love language. Um, but just like learning about yourself and figuring out what processes and things work for you mm-hmm. is really beneficial. So like, so like for if you own your own business and you're able to make your own hours and your own work schedule figuring out what 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 time you work best at and you know just how you work really helps because if you're trying to fit your triangle self into a round hole you're just going to be stressed and overwhelmed all the time Mm -hmm. that's so true yeah you got to do things the way the way you are most comfortable And that's the cool thing about being like your own boss. You know, you can customize everything to your own liking. You know, you can run things how you see fit. Me being a like total control freak. Like I love that. That's the, the, the best, most rewarding thing is because I can move as fast as I need to move. And I don't have to wait for like 10 people to say yes. And, you know, give me the green light. I'm just like, no, this is what we're going to do. And this is how we're going to do it. Go, you know, and delegating and, you know, encouraging people, getting, making sure they have the tools they need to be successful. And, you know, being a fearless leader, being well-informed and not just, not just, not just leading for the sake of leading for the, um, the prestige of it all, but leading so you can be effective, you know, like knowing the way and showing the way that is so important to me. And that's something I've been thinking about a lot is like, 
what does leadership look like and what should it look like? And, you know, I move in different circles and I work with different people. And, you know, before I was having this huge conflict with an individual who is so desperate to be labeled a leader, but this person is not a leader. They have horrible leadership skills and they just want the prestige of it. They just want the title and they don't know what they're doing, you know, and that used to just like really irk me. And, and then I work with this other team of amazing people, like super smart, informed, creative. They're all about collaboration and we get things done. You know, we make things happen. And I freaking love that environment. And I love working with people like that who are like not operating from a place of ego, but they're operating from a place of how do we make good decisions for the good of all? You know, they're like big picture people. And that's the kind of person I am, you know, I'm all about the big picture, you know, how does this one decision, how is this one decision going to impact this, you know, all these other things. Um, it's all like, uh, it's like the, I don't want to say collateral damage, but you're thinking about how one action affects many other actions, you know, how does that one thing have impact? So like, that's always on my mind. That's just how I think. And um, in the fields that I work in, you know, with like development, research, fundraising, and then um, finding solutions for indigenous communities. That's really like the long-term goal is like, how do, how do I make my life mean something? You know, how do I have big impact so that, you know, what I do today is gonna positive, positively benefit my children and grandchildren, you know? And it's hard, it's like, you really got to think things through and you really got to have um, integrity and you really have to like have long-term focus. Like vision is everything. And if you're moving without a vision and if you're taking steps without a sense of direction, you're going to find yourself walking in circles a lot, you know? And I just, I hope that people who are taking time to hear this conversation who might care about these things, you know, that's one thing that I would like to kind of share is just trust your intuition, trust your ideas and trust your own ability and make decisions, you know, be brave, like lead, you know, don't, don't always wait for people to give you permission to do one thing or the other, you know, um, especially when it comes to things related to your career, your education, your family. And when it comes to other things, you know, there are other parts of my life where I like to be guided. I seek out guidance, like when it comes to like spirituality, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to run the show there, you know what I mean? Um, I rely on those who are trained and who have committed their lives, you know, to that, like the, the study of the human spirit and healing and that, you know what I mean? So I'm not trying to run the show there. And when it comes to things like friendship and love, you know, those are things that I do not ever try to like be a puppet master. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want any control in that situation. I would rather just let things happen naturally and organically let the pieces fall where they may you know what I mean give people the freedom to decide how they want to interact with you and give me the freedom to decide how I want to interact with them and really genuinely appreciate one another because that's how respect grows and that's how love grows and that's how it's sustained how friendships can grow and be established for a lifetime and that's what I want you know I aim for lifelong friendship. So I try to be super honest with my friends. I don't ever try to control them or their lives. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't know my thoughts on that <laughs> specifically. Yeah. Like I said, like, my brain runs in circles, not linear sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like so I'm constantly thinking about things going different ways and different um so like I said like I don't know like if I haven't really thought about it mm -hmm. to be honest I I know I like having 
things planned out excessively. Mm-hmm. Most things, like trips and different things, uh, or like business meetings, what my day looks like, what my week looks like. I always hope to know what my month looks like, but that's that's just a dream to have my entire month planned out and it going according to plan. But I try. <laughs> um, and that just puts me at ease. Um, I wouldn't say like having complete control over exactly where everything's going. I just like knowing. You know, like I don't have to be driving the boat, but I want to know where we're going and what time we expect to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's kind of how I am with life. It's like I don't have to be the one always steering, mm-hmm. but as long as I know where I'm going, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we were doing the, um, when Team YKD was doing the Empower Accelerator program, um, that's what it was like it was like being in a boat with a bunch of different people and letting the trainers guide us and you know drive the boat to a destination and that was a really fun experience um we wrapped up um in may and in june we had to submit our final projects and that was like i went through what you're going through now you know trying to pull everything together and submit a final for us it was a video a final video and you know just pulling in all the information that we acquired and sharing with them our story so that was super stressful like we did it like in one shot we were just like you know what show up film it turn it in let's get it done and you know i wrote like a little script and you know we knocked it out but um i think our official graduation is next in two weeks Um, They're going to have an in-person one in San Diego, which we're not going to be able to attend, but we're going to, we're going to log in through Zoom and they're going to be giving out prizes. And um, I was, I don't know, one of the guys was like, Hey, I heard good things are coming to you guys. And I was like, did we win something? Cause I hope we did. (laughs) (laughs) He won't tell me. He was like, you just got to show up. So I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm hoping that we got something out of it because they were supposed to give out like cash prizes to certain teams. Certain businesses are going to win cash prizes. Um, And then others are going to get other like cool gifts from like GoDaddy, which is cool. Like one of the gifts we got was um, we got a two year subscription for a website. So it could be either a GoDaddy website or a a WordPress website. And so that was cool. They gave us the codes for that. Um, We did our our legal audit this month also. That was cool. So we met with an attorney and talked about, you know, what we what we need in preparation for this coming year, because we're going to be working with a lot of contractors this year because our goal is to, like, provide employment. And so we're hoping we can kind of build our team out because our 10 year goal is to not only have brick and mortars, but to also have a team at each location, you know? So that's like a, it's gonna be a big endeavor. And I know 10 years can go by super fast, but that's what I wanna see. I wanna see our business grow. And I want us to see, I wanna, I want us to grow our team so that it's bigger and stronger. So um, we're kind of getting ready for that right now, just kind of getting our house in order as far as like um, the business is concerned, because we haven't really done a lot this year. Um, We're actually going to our first conference this fall. And um, that's going to be nice to be to be back on the conference circuit because I miss that, you know, meeting with all the the big brains, you know, I mean, asking all the big questions. So I don't know. I love that sort of thing. I'm a total geek about it. So Fourth of July, be safe social distance, wear your mask, please respect people's space and take care of one another. No fireworks. We have enough fires. Uh, (laughs) That's all I wanted to say. Like, (laughs) only you can prevent forest fires. (laughs) Because they defunded the national forest projects. Oh my god. That's crazy. Do you remember seeing that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I think when Trump 
I think it's like his second or third year, yeah. he defunded the National Forest Service, and they're like, only you can prevent forest fires, because we've been defunded. <laughs> and like, there was like the rogue National Forest Service Twitter account that was the unofficial account, and they were just spewing all of this like stuff. And there was that meme was like, who thought the revolution would have been started by the National Forest Service? But... <laughs> That's so funny. It's not a Navajo tea time if I don't have a meme reference. <laughs> okay, so this has been Navajo tea time. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment below. Remember, if we get a hundred comments that say join TikTok, happy accidents, and why Katie, we will join TikTok. I we say will. this with all this apprehension in my voice. Like, oh my do it. Let's just do it just to get Kelsey on TikTok. That'd be so funny. Um, right. Also, join us for our fitness challenge in July. 75 miles for the month. Let's do this. Just walk in circles 75 times around a mile loop. <laughs> that sounds so boring. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, everyone, thank you for joining us for Navajo Tea Time. We are going to celebrate our two-year anniversary, and we're going to brainstorm some new topics for the next month. So if you have suggestions, please post them down below. We will take it seriously. If you would like to follow us on social media, we are on Facebook and Instagram. If you have any suggestions for our next video or you want to be a guest, please contact us post down below and we will be in touch yeah you can email us it'll all be in the descriptions down below i go yep. on that <laughs>